All right, Blue Ridge family, check out behind us there. New camper, new truck, and guess what we're going to be doing today? I was going to say same wife. Can, same wife, yeah, same wife. I, I've not traded her in yet. I'm going to keep her. She's probably the oldest thing I got, I guess. But <laughs> Anyways, we're going to be cooking for you today. We finally got through high school softball. We finally got a free weekend. You all know I like to cook, so... I'm gonna show you one of the first recipes that I ever cooked in a Dutch oven over the fire. It's not complicated, just takes a little bit of time. So stick around. This is gonna be a good one. I've been waiting to do this one for a long time. about to choke on it a little bit. Let me show you how we get this started. Let me show you the ingredient list and uh, just kind of how we roll. Got the fire, need embers. We don't need a flame right now. We got the Dutch oven. Over here, cube steaks. I already prepped, I seasoned it a little bit. Put uh, Roll it in some seasoned flour as well. Knock the excess off. Been letting it kind of come up to room temperature a little bit. We got some bell pepper, onions. We've got garlic. We got some bacon grease. You don't have to use bacon grease. I like it because it makes it taste good. Not very good for you. Some butter. Got some beef broth right here for the gravy. A little flour for a thickener. Here we go. It's gonna be good. All right, so we've got our Dutch oven. And what I've done is I've actually put some of this bacon grease in here and I've got it hot enough to where we're basically gonna take our steaks, lay them in there, I don't know if you can hear that, probably not. I've got my mic on. You can see it though. You want it to talk to you just a little bit because what we want to do is get these browned. We're not really looking to cook them all the way through. We're just wanting to get them browned a little bit. Okay, we're gonna flip these over after a couple of minutes. And that's pretty much it. We got eight steaks total. So we're gonna get these browned up good. Take a few minutes to do that and uh, then we'll show you what's done with the rest of this. All right, guys, we are done. See that? Let's brown it up. These are not done because we're going to slow cook these to get them nice and tender. The whole point of this is just to simply get these browned up a little bit. So you can see about how much grease I've got in the pot there. I'm going to go ahead and drop me a couple of tablespoons of butter in. And while that's melting, let's talk a little bit about cooking in cast iron. When I'm doing this, I purposely put this in here to get it as hard as I can to brown the steaks. Now I'm fixing to saute the vegetables and when I slow cook this stuff, it's, it's a process. I've got a, I'll show you how I set up my tripod. When you're sauteing these vegetables in this, you've got to sometimes, this pot will get too hot, I'll pull it out, stir it around, let it cool off a little bit. I just want to get some heat back in here. And then I'm going to actually take this off. There's plenty of heat in that right there. And I'm going to go in. This is one medium onion, bell pepper. All that's going in there. And you can see there is no heat underneath that. So I'm gonna let this go for a few minutes and I may put it back in the heat. I'm gonna put the garlic in, but I wanna get this cooked down first. So I'm gonna let this cook maybe two minutes. I don't know. You just get used to it. There's really no time. Soften these just a little bit, go in with the garlic and we'll move on to the next step of this thing. All right, if you'll take a look, you always hear me talk about seasoning in layers. Put a little salt and pepper in there. It's been a couple of minutes, put it back on the fire. Get a little more heat in that pan. We're gonna go in with our garlic, probably at least a tablespoon and a half. You gotta have at least that much because everything we cook has garlic in it, except cupcakes. We don't do garlic and cupcakes. We might try that though. You're gonna let the garlic cook down for just a few minutes. Come right back over here. Now, this is kind of a feel thing. Typically you want equal parts fat and grease. I probably got about six tablespoons of uh, 
grease, butter, bacon fat, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to go in with quite that much, but we're going to go in, need to thicken this up because what we're going to do is make like a, basically a beef gravy that these are going to cook in. And if you look right there, I'm plenty, plenty hot enough. Do not want to burn this, so I'm going to pull it back out. If you look, I just want enough flour in here to soak all that up a little bit more. So, Shannon, if you can, get a good shot in this pan. And you can see about what that looks like right there. So I'm just gonna let, again, let this cook a couple of minutes, get the raw flavor out of the flour. You probably heard chefs or people talk about that in recipes. Keep moving it around a little bit. And basically we're making like a roux. You hear me talk about roux all the time for gravies. No different right here. So we're gonna let this cook for just a minute and I'll get this back on the fire. We'll go on to the next part of it. All right, we're back on the fire. Heat control, that is the most important thing. You learn how to control your heat, you can cook anything over a campfire. So it obviously takes a little more time than your standard old cooking in the house, but this is where it's at. So now we've got our roux made, everything cooked down. So we're gonna go in with, I don't know how much beef stock. We're gonna start with about that much. So that's about half this container. So probably 20 ounces. And we're gonna stir this around. And remember when you make a roux, it's getting hot. Don't, don't ever forget your gloves when you do this either, you need them. When you make a roux, you never know how thick the gravy is gonna be, whatever you're making, until it boils. Once it boils, that's how thick it is. You can add more stock uh, if you need it, or you can simmer it down. So if you'll get a good shot of that right there. Shannon, this is uh, thin right now, but we're not gonna boil yet because it's gonna take it a few minutes. So let's give this a couple minutes to get up to temperature. See where we're at, and basically we want this to be thick enough to just barely coat the back of a spoon because when we put our steaks back in it, it's gonna thicken up as it cooks. And we're gonna cook these for an hour, two hours, whatever we think to get the cube steak uh, nice and tender. So let's give this a couple of minutes and see where we're at. All right, I don't know, Shannon, can you get a shot back over your shoulder there? You see that? That's a storm rolling in. So we are at Cumberland Mountain uh, State Park and I don't know that we've ever been here that a storm didn't roll in. So this is okay. It's expected to some degree. Back down to this right here. So we're a little bit thicker. I went ahead and added the rest of that 48 ounces. This is just a touch thinner than typically would be. I'm gonna move a little faster in case it does start raining. Now we're just gonna take the steaks. And remember, this is gonna thicken up as it cooks too. Lay all these steaks back down in here. We've got eight of these total, seven for me, and I, I don't know what everybody else is gonna eat because I'm hungry. But this gravy will get thicker as it cooks. And don't forget to put all that nice juice back in there too. That's flavor. So we're just gonna give this a little bit of a stir. And as the wind blows, you'll notice some ashes down in here. That's some very unique flavoring. Go look at Addison real quick. Pan over on Addison. We got her. We got her. All right. Addison, she, she acts like she's camera shy, but she's not. So now we are ready to move on and get this hung up. Lid on, spin it a little bit. And listen, I have took this very meal and ruined it because I didn't have two gloves on at this state park. So wear gloves, learn from my mistakes, wear gloves. We're gonna start out with this kind of low right here. Just adjust your tripod where you need it. I'm gonna start out low. I'm gonna put some more wood on the fire. It's easier if you can actually get smaller sticks of wood, put it under there. That's the easiest way to heat control. The other thing you can do is move the chain up and down. Again, take some effort to do it, well worth it. So we're gonna let this simmer for an hour, two hours. We've still got mashed potatoes to make. We've got macaroni and cheese with jumbo shells. Coach Shannon picked up jumbo shells. Uh, they're as big as Addison's head, but we're gonna eat them anyways. And homemade biscuits. We're gonna get through the rest of this and hopefully it don't rain. So stick around, this is gonna be good. All right, let's take a look. I had to lift it up a little bit. 
I don't know if you can get a good shot of that. It's got a nice steady simmer. You can already see that gravy starting to thicken up a little bit. So we're gonna put the lid back on that. If you'll notice, I had the bottom somewhere around in here. Now I've lifted it up probably six, eight inches. Again, it just takes practice for heat control is all it is. Pay attention to it. And uh, every 10 or 15 minutes, just crack that lid, take a look, see what you got, make your adjustments. It's gonna be good. I'm about to starve to death already. All right, we got our steak and gravy going the way we want it. So next thing I did is I went ahead and put the potatoes on. So one of the things when you're cooking multiple dishes over the fire, you have to kind of manage your fire, make sure you're replenishing coals the way you need to because you're going to be using them and also just starting the next dish at the right time so it all kind of finishes. And uh, I don't know that I've ever got it perfect, but hey, we're out here outside cooking. It doesn't really matter. So what I got here is about five pounds of potatoes, which is way more than we'll eat. Got some coals going on underneath it, as you can see right there. Coals on top, you saw the steam coming out. All I did was put some oil in the bottom, a little bit of butter, and we're just gonna cook those until they're tender and make it like regular mashed potatoes. Nothing fancy, salt, pepper, some butter. I like to put a little sour cream. We'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the fire, hang out and relax for a little bit. So it's time to start the next part of this. All right, we're back inside. I'm got an eye on my fire. Got to keep an eye on the fire. Making the biscuits right now. So what I do for my biscuits, and I'll do an actual recipe for this, uh, probably in the, the link below, I'll, or uh, the description below, I'll put a recipe. But I'm gonna do a video on the biscuits that I make. So basically all this is self-rising flour. I put just a little bit of baking soda, baking powder. This is about a cup and a half of flour. Uh, self-rising, maybe a tablespoon each of baking soda, baking powder. I've been experimenting with that. It's been working out well so far. Just a pinch of salt, not too much, and maybe a half a stick of butter-flavored Crisco. So right now, I'm just kind of mashing this in with this fork, working this in. So what I'm going to do is continue to do this until I get it to where it looks like breadcrumbs, like any other biscuit recipe. Here's the key to my biscuits, in my opinion, anyways is that's not just milk, that's whole milk. It's about a cup of whole milk and about one uh, tablespoon of white vinegar. So it's like homemade buttermilk. Let that set, mix it up good. Let it set for probably a minute. And it gives those biscuits a good, like a buttermilk flavor to it. I think it's better than buttermilk. That's how I make mine. So I'm gonna finish this up and we'll get these put in the Dutch oven and get these cooking here in just a little bit when it's time for them. So, Shannon's out for a walk right now and I don't blame her. What I've got, you see the biscuit dough here. This is not too wet, not too dry. Add your buttermilk slowly, but I don't want to roll all this out. We're camping, all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is first, let me get my flour back out. Forgot about that. I'm just simply going to take, flour my hands up real good and I'm going to pinch off a little bit of this and this is how I make them at home a lot and just make a disc and I'm gonna set them in a pan. A lot of people will cook their uh, biscuits straight in a Dutch oven which you can absolutely do and I've done it before too. I'm just trying this today to see how this works out. May hate it, I don't know, but also may like it. So these are very rustic biscuits but it don't matter because we're outside cooking on the fire and that's what it's supposed to look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these finished, patted out, rolled up. I'll show you what the, the pan looks like, how I kind of set them in there and how I'm gonna get them set up in the Dutch oven. And we'll get these outside here shortly. See where the potatoes are at. See where the steak and gravy, I'm looking at it outside the window right now and it's looking really good. So I'll give you a shot of what these biscuits look like once I get them in the Dutch oven. All right, so we're set up now. You'll notice I've got a trivet just to kind of keep this pan. Put all the biscuits in there. Just gonna set these on here. Gives us a little bit of space on the bottom. Get the lid on top. And we're gonna go out and get this on the fire when it is appropriate for it to go on the fire. So we're gonna go check everything else out out here and hang out a while and relax. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Been in there making biscuits, got those done. 
I actually stuck those in the fridge because it's going to be just a little while. Check this out. Ooh, looky there, looky there. Nice rolling simmer. You can already see that that gravy is starting to thicken up very nicely. Those will be done here in probably eh, 30 minutes. Let's take a look over here at these potatoes. Nice and slow. All we're trying to do is get these tender where we can mash these up with a little bit of sour cream, a little milk, salt, and pepper. And this thing's coming together. I'm probably going to get the biscuits on here in about another eh, 15 minutes. It'll take those about 20. And uh, got some macaroni and cheese to boil too. What I will probably do, and I'll show you, once the steaks are done, I'll put a small bed of coals down on the ground just to keep those warm. And I will put the pot, uh, I've got a pot, and we're gonna boil the water just like you would at home for macaroni and cheese, cook the pasta, make some sort of cheese sauce with that, but this is gonna be good. So let's hang out a while and wait. Okay, so if you'll take a look here, potatoes, about halfway cooked. And this is a method that uh, I've learned, of course, over the years of doing this. Potatoes here, we got stuff going on the top here. So we got heat top and bottom. So we utilize the heat of the top of this for the bottom of this. This is actually my biscuits that I just put on, showed you how to make those. And this is the steak and gravy. And you can see, we still got some good action going on in that. Even though it didn't look like there's a ton of heat, that is going on good. Now, when you're at home and you want to boil your potatoes, you put them on high. Not potatoes, but this is the pasta. This is the campfire high right here. Where you got it all the way down there in the fire. You got the lid on it. So the last thing we need to do is make the cheese sauce for the macaroni and cheese, the jumbo shells that Shannon picked up. I'm not gonna let her live that one down. So we're gonna let this stuff hang out, finish cooking. We're probably an hour away maybe from eating. And I know I've already said this like 15 times and I have a bad habit of getting on something and saying it over and over. I'm about to starve to death. So hard work, but it's worth it. All right, so see my little pile of coals, cook my roux on it. That was my medium heat. Now I'm gonna put it on high. And all I'm doing is making just like a cream base sauce. So, this is my roux, just like with the gravy that we cooked in the steak and gravy. All I'm wanting to do is get this hot up to a bowl. And we're just gonna melt some cheese in this in a minute. So I'm gonna put about that much in there. And I'm gonna keep stirring this. And what we're waiting for, let me get my other glove because you will get burned. And in the meantime, I stuck my pasta over there. So all I'm looking for is to get this cold milk I put in there. I just want to bring this up to a boil. Then I'm going to set it back over here on my medium heat. And we'll melt the cheese in it. Pasta should be ready shortly thereafter. And we'll have to check on our biscuits, check on our potatoes. So we're getting close. We're getting close. All right, so if you can look, see we're finally at a boil. And you see how that's thickened up. That's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna take this off, high heat, back over here on medium heat. I'm just gonna keep stirring this. I don't wanna get that, actually I'm gonna take that all the way off the heat. And now, the cheese. Well, I don't know what this macaroni and cheese is going to taste like, but it's going to have plenty of cheese in it. I promise you that. Whoops. Camping mishap. Yes, sir. Old Patterson and Alex like cheese. So this is pretty much it. I'll thin this down with some milk as we go. I'm gonna let it get nice and melted here. Oh yeah. So look at this right here. That's cheese sauce. And it's that easy and we did it on the fire. Actually, I'm gonna leave that off there. I think I need to just leave that off there cause we'll thin it down a little bit, let that hang out. And uh, 
stick around for a minute. We're gonna check our biscuits, see how they're doing. All right, so you can see we got back on medium heat, back on high heat for the pasta. And look, I have not touched this. And you can still see with just a little bit of coal under there, we're still getting some action. So that's what we want to see there. Then you just simply take that one off. Let's look at these biscuits. Looky there, getting close. Still got a little bit to go with those. Not a problem. And our potatoes, those are getting awful, awful close. Whew, that's hot. Hmm, between the smoke and the hot potato, that hurt. Stack it all back up. And one of the key virtues is something I don't have a lot of other than for cooking and it's patience. So we're gonna hang out, let this continue to go, 15, 20 minutes, check everything again. And uh, again, if I ain't said it already, I'm about to starve to death. This is, this is looking good. I've added the milk here. We got the nice creamy, smooth cream sauce. Drained it, look at those shells. Those are some big macaroni shells. Pour that in, pretty straightforward. And if we ain't got nothing else for this meal, we're gonna have some macaroni and cheese. Cause this right here, oh yeah. Two pounds of cheese or a pound and a half anyways. All right, so you can see the tripod is gone. We've got our macaroni and cheese staying warm. Those biscuits had to put a little bit more coal on top of those because they, uh, they still lacked a little bit. But I want you to check out this is my pride and joy right here. Steak and gravy, still nice and happy. You see the bubbles. So the key to cooking this to me is if you look at it, you can kind of bend that. It's got a little bit of give, but it's not too tender. It's not gonna fall apart. So we're gonna keep that going. Shannon, if you don't care, follow me right over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the potatoes. So like I told you, I just put some oil in the bottom here and we basically, it's not really stewed potatoes. We just been cooking them till they're tender. Now, all we need to do is take our sour cream. This is about five pounds of potatoes. So quite a bit. I'll set that there. We're just gonna take and mix this in. I generally use about an eight ounce container for five pounds of potatoes. And depending on how, uh, 16, oh yeah, 16, sorry about that. Eight, 16, what's the difference? One of them containers right there, that's what I put in it. So this is off, this is not cooking, this is just residual heat from the uh, Dutch oven. So we're gonna keep stirring this around real good and get it mixed up good. And that's pretty much it. If you'll get a good shot of this right here, consistency wise. So we like thicker mashed potatoes. You can put some whole milk in here, maybe half and half if you want. And I'm gonna season this up. And also, yeah, I know more butter. If I don't do anything else, I know how to cook with butter been sitting outside and it's kind of a hot day today. Nice day, but hot. Watch the butter paper there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I about, I about flamed you out there. And listen, this is it right here. We're gonna let this set. I'll put some salt and pepper in there and we're gonna let it set. And there's enough residual heat in that cast iron to those biscuits get done. So we're probably 10 minutes away and uh, we're gonna be ready to eat. So. We're still waiting four hours. This is how long it took me to cook this. Just to put it in perspective, I, I, again, I enjoy doing this stuff, so it's not really work to me, but it takes a lot of time. Steak and gravy, and if you'll, like we were talking about later, you can see how that steak's got a little bit of give to it, but very tender. You can see the gravy, not too thick, but just thick enough. Also, we've got mashed potatoes and one of the things I was telling you I didn't boil these in water like traditional mashed potatoes 
little bit of butter, a little bit of oil in the bottom, and it actually like fried the whole bottom layer. So as you scrape that off, and you can see some brown flecks. It's kind of like fried potatoes that we've cooked long enough to mash up. A little bit of sour cream and butter, salt and pepper, you're good to go. You saw the shells and cheese. Nice creamy shells and cheese right here. Very good. Homemade biscuits. This is the first time I've ever tried to cook with another pan inside. Turned out pretty good, may try that again. So I do appreciate y'all sticking around and uh, we're gonna get this food blessed. And we're gonna sit down and eat, enjoy the rest of the evening. Appreciate y'all sticking in there. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that notification bell so you know when we put a new video out. We've got a lot of good things coming. Camper right there. We're gonna be doing a review on that soon. As soon as we get enough miles towing on the truck, we're gonna be doing a review of that. So we got a lot of cool things coming before we head out west here in exactly five weeks. Headed back out west in five weeks. So thanks for sticking around. We'll see you all next time. She's looking at it. I got him. I got him. <laughs> Looky here. Mr. Alex, hold that up, our boy. Hold him. Hold him right there. To... <laughs> so we we got a picture of Alex down there in the creek, but show everybody your fishing rod there. Homemade fishing rod. Good job. There. Bam. We might make a fisherman out of him after all. You got him. Pop it loose there. Grab it by the bend part of it and pop it out. I can't. Pull it. There you go. Throw him back in there to live another day. Alright, you got any more bread? I got it. Dad! Let's do it again. I think it's the first fish I've ever seen caught over here. He's a little bit better, ain't he? There, right, he'll be easier to unhook. Good deal. All right, there's number three on the day. Throw him back in. You going again? Oh, yeah. Can you see him? There he goes. Oh, we got him another one. Got him another one. Number four on the day. Oh, hold on. <laughs> there we go. Alright, let's get him unhooked. Throw him back in quick. Got another one. There you go. Can you hold him up there? Okay, number four. Number four. Good job. Throw him back. going for number five on the day and look at here oh no oh no he's done it again i'm the fish whisperer the fish whisperer the fish whisperer <laughs> there you go hey stop coming right out he's dangerous about that <laughs> look at here alex look at that i didn't even know there were rainbow trout up here cool that is awesome. I, I like, did not know those were in oh, here. I, I didn't even know you try. caught that over there. I didn't know those were That's that's what we fish for up. Yep. We that's fish cool. up in the uh, Teleco River sometimes. Trout fish. Bet you catch one of those on that. Probably not. Hey. There you go. You got that one that time. That's all I There it is. Throw him back. What was it? Looky there. I could hear it. It's number number five bluegill right there. Yep. Right here, good job. Yeah. Might to help you get him unhooked. He swallowed the hook a little bit. Too dark to fish. 
Alex won't give up though. We created a monster. We, we, taught, we taught him how to catch a bluegill with bread. And, and no, we're stuck the here. Away. I think it's about time to go back and drink ice cream. Drink ice cream? Eat ice cream. Eat ice cream. I was thinking drink coffee and sit by the fire. Well, I just drank coffee. If I can sit by the fire. He said you can drink more coffee. Okay. We got decaf? No, no decaf. I took a nap after cooking all day too, so. You don't need coffee? Yep. We'll probably be up for about midnight, but we don't care because we ain't got nothing to do tomorrow but pack up and leave by lunch. It was a good day. It was a good day. It was a needed day. Yes, very much so.